Hello fanatics, welcome to Diamond Painting Fanatics, I am Cindy. I don't mind admitting to you that I have a weird obsession with true crime. And it turns out that I am not the only one because you're here with me. <laughs> I could I ask a favour of you? If you enjoy my true crime episodes and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do. I'll, I would love to have you on my true crime journey and all my other diamond painting things that I do. I'll be working on my current diamond painting project while discussing another hideous individual. So please feel free to grab whatever project you are working on. Get comfy. Don't forget your drink. And let's get to today's episode, shall we? Today I am working on my Owl I Want is you that's a mouthful um from diamond art club and today we are going to be finding out i'm not very good with names and i'm not very good with places i'm in the uk <laughs> and me and my son were actually having a conversation the other day we were trying to say indianapolis and we couldn't do it um but I've just done it, so I should be okay, but bear with me and forgive the Brit over here. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be finding out about Herbert Richard Baumeister. Baumeister, that's what we're going to go with. I'm just going to call him Herbert. Have you heard of this? person. Um, he was born on April the 7th in 1947 and he was an American businessman and a serial killer because we are on Thriller Thursdays. So yeah, he was a resident of the Indianapolis suburb of Westfield, Indiana. Herbert was under investigation for murdering over a dozen men in the early 1990s, most of whom were last seen at gay bars. Police did find the remains of 11 men, it says persons, but men. Eight of them were identified and they were in... Herbert's backyard. I'm going to leave it there and we're going to go into his early life because I don't want to spoil it too soon, do I? Okay, so Herbert was born in Indianapolis, in Indiana, the oldest of four children born to Herbert senior and elizabeth his childhood was reportedly normal but he began exhibiting anti-social behavior by the onset of adolescence what kind of anti-social behavior well i'll answer that for you he was playing with dead animals and urinating on a teacher's desk. I can quite safely say I've done neither of those. So that is exhibiting strange behaviour for sure. In his teens, Herbert was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but did, but did not receive further psychiatric treatment. In 1965, Herbert attended Indiana Uni sorry, 
Indiana University for a whole semester before dropping out. But he did return in 1967, two years later. Um, But yeah, we don't know what happened, if he stayed the course or not. In 1972, he attended a semester at Butler University. So I'm guessing not. I'm guessing he didn't stick at anything, which is a red flag in my episodes. As an adult, Herbert drifted through a series of jobs marked by a strong work ethic, but also by increasing bizarre behaviour. Herbert met and he married uh, Juliana, who is known as Julie, in November 1971. And within that marriage, they had three children. Julie later said that they had only been intimate six times in over 25 years of marriage. I would have left a long time before that, but okay. And again, it is, I'm not on about the intimacy here, but it's very different times, isn't it? You can't just walk out and get divorced in these times. Okay, so in the 1970s, Herbert was committed to a psychiatric hospital by his dad, Herbert Senior. It says his wife, so I don't know if this is Julie, it must be because it would have said his mum. Okay, so Julie said he was, quote, hurting and needed help, end quote. At some point after this, Herbert founded the successful, it says SAV a lot, S-A-V-A-Lot, a thrift store chain comprising of two stores in total in Indianapolis in 1988. By the early 1990s, because now... You're thinking, well, he sounds... Well, apart from playing with dead animals and weeing on a desk, he sounds quite with it. What's he doing in Thriller Thursday, Cindy? Well, okay. By the early 1990s, investigators with the Marion County Sheriff's Department and the Indianapolis Police Department began investigating the disappearances of gay men. They were of similar age, similar height and similar weight in the Indianapolis area. Now, when I'm done with this episode, I want you to play it back and have a drink every time that I have to say Indianapolis. (laughs) I don't care what time of day it is. In 1992, they were contacted by a man named Tony Harris claiming that a gay bar patron, a customer, calling himself, quote, Brian Smart, had killed a friend of his and he had attempted to kill him with a pool hose during an erotic asphyxiation session. Tony, the one that contacted the police, eventually saw this man again in August 1995. Bearing in mind, this is now night two, night three, night four, night three years later. He saw him again and he followed his car and he noted down his licence plate. From this information, police identified, quote, Brian Smart as Herbert Baumeister. Investigators approached 
Herbert and told him that he was a suspect in the disappearances and asked to search his house. Both Herbert and his wife Julie refused to allow a search of their property. By June 1996, so a year later, Julie had become sufficiently frightened by her husband's erratic behaviour that after filing for divorce, she consented to a search. The search of the 18-acre estate known as Fox Hollow Farm was conducted while Herbert was on vacation. It turned up the remains of 11 men, eight of whom were identified. With a warrant out for his arrest, Herbert fled to Ontario in Canada, where, and this bit is annoying, where he committed suicide at Pinery Provincial Park on Lake Huron by shooting himself in the head. In his suicide note, he described his failing marriage and business as his reason for killing himself. He did not confess to the murders of the men found in his backyard. Herbert would posthumously be suspected of killing nine other men, but the bodies of these nine men were found in rural areas along the corridor of Interstate 70 between Indianapolis and Columbus, Ohio, during the early to mid 1980s. Bearing in mind, he came onto the radar mid 1990s. That's a whole lot of time where he was not on any radar. I'm just putting that out there. One eyewitness identified Herbert as the man seen leaving a bar in 1983 with Michael Riley, who was later found dead. Like the other victims, Michael Riley was strangled to death and deposited nude or semi-nude in a river. So he obviously had an M.O., of that time yes so is that shocking it is rather isn't it this man had got away with a whole lot and then took not only took the coward's way out but he didn't even kind of say you got me in his suicide note And this is the power trip that these serial killers, psychopaths play with not only families or law enforcement. It's it's just sad. Um, Really, really sad. Um, And I don't know how many of the... um, Well... What did we say? They found another nine that they kind of pinned on to him. Obviously fitting the MO and the evidence and stuff. Um, I believe it was nine. So eight were identified of the 11 that was in his backyard. And then around the rural areas there was another nine people. I don't know how many of those were identified. But that is the shocking story of Herbert. So, as always, 
please leave your thoughts down below. I love reading your comments. I really do. And especially on the true crime. And, um, yeah, I have decided that I will do one every Thursday, guaranteed. So every Thursday there will be a true crime episode. I am going to try and do more of them because a lot of people are coming across my true crime and enjoying it. And I do have to give a massive shout out to Caroline because I stopped doing them uh, way back when and Caroline had obviously come across them and said, are you doing any more? And I was like, well, I can. Um, and it has um, become more and more popular. So, yeah, a huge shout out to Caroline for bringing me back into the true crime. I'm loving it. Um, I watch a lot of true crime. Um, I did watch a series on, I think it was Netflix or Amazon Prime. I flick between the two. Yeah, some very interesting cases that I took note of that we will talk about. But I will try and do a couple more episodes. You might get two a week, you might get one a week. I'm not going to um, pressure myself or put myself under pressure. I don't cope well. So stay tuned, guys. And please do hit that subscribe button if you're enjoy enjoying my true crime or any of my other content. I would love to have you on my journey through diamond painting, true crime and life itself. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to reading your comments. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you very soon, guys. Bye.